Hallelujah. We're going to ask the elders of the church to come. Amen. To get ready. Prepare to pray. Amen. If there's any needs that are represented in this house, we invite you to come. I know there are several who are out, who are sick. We want to remember them in prayer. Amen. We know a God that's able to heal their bodies, to lift them up, and to make them whole. Amen. If you've come with a need in your life, amen, you don't have to leave the same way that you came. Amen. We serve a God who hears and answers our prayers, who's faithful to supply our every need. We invite you to come right now. Oh, we're going to believe. Thank you, Jesus. God, we're asking. thank him oh for his excellent goodness why don't we thank him in advance for meeting each and every one of these needs that we lifted up before him hallelujah we thank you jesus is anybody excited to be in the house of the lord tonight we've come to have a holy ghost party tonight because we're in the place where there's deliverance there is healing in this house tonight anything you need is here tonight Let's give him all the praise tonight.
Feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. Amen. How many of you came to give Him all glory and all the honor and all the praise? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Bishop and First Lady, if I could have you come stand next to each other, please. October is Pastor's. Appreciation Month, and we do have a small gift for both of you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. How many of you are thankful that God has blessed Christian Growth Center with such a pastor? Man, that's okay. <laughs> so this is for Bishop and First Lady. Thank you for every prayer, every fast day, every late night. Thank you for a life that has been wholly dedicated to the saints of Christian Growth Center. We love you and we stand ready to follow you both wherever God leads us. You can be seated. It's an honor and a joy to be a part of this beautiful CGC family and to play a small role in what we all do together in the kingdom of God. God has great things in store for us and he's a mighty God and he's gonna do mighty things. This is from you wonderful people. Your ministry is making a difference. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So will you be my disciples. We wanted to make sure that you knew how appreciated you are, not only for all you do, but for who you are, a reflection of the one that you serve. We love you stand ready to follow you both wherever God leads us. Christian Grove Center, thank you so much for that beautiful card. Give yourself a hand. And I want to say, along with Sister Elder, that one of the highlights of my life, outside of being who God has called me to be in my wife and my family, is this beautiful church right here. You wonderful people have so responded to the plan and the vision of God to this city. A few years ago, I was uh, was preaching somewhere. I know what I was doing. I was doing an installation for a pastor. And the Lord revealed to me that if that man would tap into God's vision for that church and for that city and for that area, like the previous pastor had tapped in to that purpose and vision, that God would do just as great of work in the pastor that was being installed as the man that had been there and it doesn't seem like much, but to me it was an incredible revelation that this is not my vision. This is not my mission. This is God's vision. And this is God's mission. And if we will get in submission with Him, He wants to do great and mighty things in all of our lives 
and in the lives of every person in this city and in this area. <clears throat> For that to happen takes people that will follow that communication. So when you pray, pray for me that I can communicate God's vision. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you folks have done a marvelous job heretofore, but I think God has greater things for us in the future. How many of you believe that God has greater things for us in the future? Christian Growth Center, I love you with all of my heart. I'm not abashed about saying that. I'm not timid about saying that. I'm not shy about saying that. And thank you for being the great church that you are. God bless you. How'd you get that? I thought it was on back order. Thank you. We love y'all. Hey Amen. We're going to move on in a second, but why don't we stand? Why don't we stand? Why don't you reach across the aisle, find somebody you haven't greeted yet tonight, shake their hand or hug them, let them know that you are happy to see them in the house of the Lord this Sunday evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. As you're shaking hands and greeting one another, ask your neighbor if they have $100 you can borrow for the offering. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. This, this past week, First Pentecostal Church of North Little Rock hosted their first Apostolic Educators Convention. They also hosted their first apostolic student convention where the students competed in various areas. And one of those areas was music. And our very own Sister Carly Montez won third place in the music competition. Amen. Competing against young people from don't know how many states all over the United States that came there so we're excited <clears throat> about our young people amen and about the abilities and talents that God has given them 
Praise God. Hallelujah. How many believe in our young people? Hallelujah. And I jokingly told my wife it was it was rigged. She should have gotten first place. I'm just kidding. But let's read our scripture together and get ready to bring our tithe and offering. Amen. We are investing. We are investing in Christian Growth Center. We're investing in the future of our young people every time we come and we give in this offering. Amen. Let's read together. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Amen. Let's bring a cheerful
all close our eyes. We look to you tonight, Jesus. We need you. Thank you for being in this room, God. Thank you for gracing us with your presence over and over and over and over. Even when we're weak in our bodies or there's situations going on, it doesn't change who you are and how you operate, Jesus. We know you're in the room tonight and we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We are unworthy, Jesus. But you come over and over again and again. You pour out your spirit over and over again and we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this room. Amen. 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 Is anybody thankful to be here tonight? There's a whole lot of other places we could be, but there's no other place that I would be tonight than in the presence of my Savior and Creator, amen? Well, the Spirit of God has been moving, and now it's time for His Word to come forth, and I'm excited to hear what God has to say tonight. He's already been speaking through the worship, through the songs that we have sung. His promises are true even in the songs that we sing. But now it's time for our bishop, our man of God, to come and deliver a word to us tonight. Is anybody ready to hear whatever the Spirit has to say? If you're a guest or a visitor, or maybe you've been here coming to church all your life, I just want to remind you that at any point in time of this service, you need Jesus. All you have to do is come down here to this altar and there will be people here to pray for you. And God is going to meet you at the point of your need. Does anybody believe that tonight? Even if it's while Bishop is preaching, we're ready. Amen, church? We're, met, we're ready to pray with each other and evoke one another to good works and respond to the preached word of God. Amen? One more time as he comes, why don't we lift up our hands and lift up a shout of praise. Well, we got our hands lifted. Can we get a shout of praise there? Hallelujah. 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 God, we love you and we praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. As the choir was singing, there were two things. First of all, I looked out there and I saw Brother Ed. And I'm glad to see Brother Ed in church tonight. When I saw him, I looked out there and I saw Brother Juan, Sister Susie. And many of our children and Brother Kenny and Sister Kathy. And quietly... God is sending a mighty, mighty revival. You ought to get your eyes off of the, all the bad stuff that Satan's trying to get you to focus on. And you ought to see what God is doing in Pueblo, Colorado. Hallelujah. On top of that, God has given us brother and sister Lewis and brother and, and sister Reed and sister Kimmy and the family prayed back through and brother Duran is on his way hallelujah you say brother do you ever give up nope I got bulldog faith I never give up I just don't I'm sorry you're at the wrong place if you're looking for a given up church this is the wrong church to be in this is not a given up church this is a get right church and let's go home church can you clap your hands to the Lord and give him the praise that he's worthy of Praise God. The second thing that God spoke to me is that we live in a world where there is a lot of churn. That is a tech term, and it's a sales term when there's a high rate of turnover. People do not have the loyalty that they used to have to products, to brands. Uh, it is a very fast shifting society and so if you're not careful you get caught up in all that churn and uh, 
then you miss out on many of the blessings that God wants to give you that are actually in the genetics of your faithfulness. It's built into the genetics of your faithfulness. That's why Brother Elder hammers faithfulness so much is because that is where you will find the blessing and the provision of God. And, and so if you get caught up in all that churn, it's kind of like people that they think, well, you know, if, if I divorce this person and I marry this person, no, that didn't work, so I'll divorce this person and marry this person. Somewhere I'm going to find my soulmate. No, you and your soulmate are going to go through the process of being faithful, and that's how you're going to become soulmates. Anybody that's got a few years in marriage know what I'm talking about right now? And that's how we example that to our church. That's how we example that to our children. That's how we example that to our grandchildren. And out of that faithfulness, incredible blessing and provision comes. That's the way it is with the church. If you just stay faithful to God, it's like, it's like one guy said, you know, when you play a country and western song backwards, you know what you get, don't you? Get your house back, you get your wife back, get your dog back. Well, if you live for God, it's kind of like playing a country and western song backwards, only it's a hundred times better, a million times better. You get restored to everything that God intended for you to have in the first place because it's His will. Praise God. And so uh, faithfulness is so vital. Part of that faithfulness is the loyalty to God to your church, to your family. And here's the big one, to one another. Out there in the world, they are teaching you that, that, that loyalty is just a figment of your imagination. I know I'm taking a little time here, but God told me to talk about this. And so we don't divide ourselves up and say, well, uh, I am Paul's disciple. I am Cephas or Peter's disciple. And I am Apollos' disciple. All of that was going on at Corinth. And because of that, there were lots of maladies in that church. That means sicknesses. But when we bond together as God's body and we say, you know what? We do have one pastor and we have one God, but we have many instructors. And those instructors have something very important and, and it is so valuable to us. And God has blessed this church with some of the greatest preaching in Pentecost. I, I think we can give a better, let, let's don't just be like half-hearted. Remember, if you're going to clap your hands, clap your hands with all of your heart. Hallelujah. He really has. And and so one of those is Brother Mitchell Elder, and I love this young man more than he will ever know. Uh, in a lot of ways, he's like me, but in a lot of ways, he's like his mom. But beyond all of that, what I love is he is striving to be like Jesus. That means the world to me. And I was, I was at home this afternoon, and I was looking through some stuff and I just felt the Lord say why don't you have Brother Mitchell Elder preach tonight so Brother Mitchell Elder I love you I thank you for being a son that a father can be Holy Ghost proud of in the way that you uphold this wonderful truth not only with your belief system but with your lifestyle and your behavior let's give God a high praise as Brother Mitchell comes to preach the word of the Lord tonight Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. It's not often I get to preach in front of Bishop. It's a little nerve-wracking. No, I'm kidding. If we could open our Bibles to Acts chapter 2.
going to work our way through some verses. This has been, been, excuse me, this has been very interesting to me. Several, almost about a year ago now, I asked God for a favor, and He has granted it. And my request was, God, if you will allow me, I would like to preach every verse through the book of Acts. Now, that may not make sense to some because you may not be called to preach, as in ministering behind a pulpit. Every single one of us are called to preach the gospel. Oh, I think we can do better than that. Every single one of us are called to preach the gospel. But when we preach, we are the oracle of God. And if you're going to be the oracle of God, it behooves you to speak his words. And so God gives the man of God a word. And he has granted me to do this. That's what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to begin at verse 5. We're going to work through verse 13. Verse 5 says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And I know this title is not on what I gave the media. This is rather just for what they post online. So for the title, for those that are going to post this online, the title is this, Sweet New Wine. Sweet New Wine. Why don't we lay our Bibles down and let's pray. Jesus, I love you. We worship you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. God, would you minister in this house? Would you reveal yourself in this house, God? Would you make yourself known? Would you touch every heart? Would you touch every mind? God, would you speak to your people the same way that you spoke to me as I studied through these few verses of your word? Above everything else, God, thy kingdom come and thy will be done in this house. Anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our minds to understand. Anoint our hearts to receive. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. You can put that up there on the screen. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. There is something called the dysphoria or the diaspora, and that is the scattering of the Jews throughout every nation under earth. When... Israel was destroyed for the second time. They were scattered throughout all the earth. And even in the time of Acts, they have been scattered. They have come back to the homeland. And you can read about this in the Old Testament. And then you can study this historically in what many call the silent years or the 400 years of silence. <clears throat> But while there are some Jews who have come back to the land of Palestine, many of them never came back. In fact, many of them were scattered throughout all the nations of the earth and had managed to become very wealthy. There are several reasons for this, and it's not very important to what we're preaching tonight, but you can study this. But because of these different reasons, the Jews had become very influential in the different nations that they had been scattered in. And there were converts. The Jews had converted Gentiles, which would be known as proselyte Jews. This is interesting because verse 5 of chapter 2 says, So the devout men, there were Jews, devout men out of every nation, under heaven, The devout men mentioned in verse 5 were not just any body 
or any gathering of people. But in fact, this was the wealthy. Why do I say that? Because it was very costly to travel in that time. And so this is literally what Luke is saying, that these are Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. It was costly to get back to Jerusalem for this feast. And so this was not just a general gathering of the population for this feast. Rather, this would have been the most devout in faith and the wealthiest and the most educated that had gathered in Jerusalem for this feast, as well as those that were closer to Jerusalem, they could make the journey. This is the influx that is plaguing Jerusalem. And I, and I say plaguing because it would become very difficult to live in Jerusalem at this time because so many people flooded the area. In fact, this is interesting. It's really just a side note that I found. But Bishop Trees actually translates in his literal word the word devout as reverent showing us that these men had a reverence and an understanding about them scripture also clearly states that the sum total of the nations gathered together was representative of quote every nation under heaven and if you have nothing else to read tonight I challenge you to go read all the different commentaries and what they say about the list that Luke puts in Acts. It's very, it's very interesting. Some of them say there's no purpose at all, which I disagree with. Because why would God put it in His Word if, if it didn't matter? You know, there's a doctrine that floats around that God's words are in the Bible, but not every word is inspired of God. That is false doctrine. We know that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable. And so you can read through all the different, I don't know, it's irrelevant to what we're talking about tonight. But I do know that it's in there for a reason. The reason is that Luke is giving credence to his statement. And we'll get to this here in a second. But he's giving credence to his statement that there is a gathering of all nations back to Jerusalem. One might ask, why is this important? It has to do with God reuniting the entire earth under one common tongue. Other tongues. We read in Genesis 11, 1 through 9, God scattered all the people by confounding their language. But now in Acts 2, God is beginning to reunite all peoples by one language, the language of, quote, other tongues. Genesis 11.1 1 says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad, abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So we see that in Genesis 11, God confounds the language and scatters people abroad. He breaks up this uniting. Why? Because it was for a wicked purpose. It wasn't for the will of God. And so he scatters men. But just as how beautiful the Bible is, you see that God reunites everyone under one language. What does that say to us? Well, Bishop talked about it a little bit this morning. One thing that says to us is that the gospel is all inclusive. The gospel is not exclusive. The gospel is not exclusive to race. The gospel is not exclusive to color. The gospel is not exclusive to language. The gospel is not exclusive to wealth or the lack thereof. The gospel is not exclusive to education or the lack thereof. God said that He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
That's the beauty. That's what God is doing right now. Luke is making a point saying that every nation under heaven is gathered. Why? Because the scattering that happened in the beginning of time, now in the end times, God is going to bring us back together. Verse number 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Noised abroad in some literal translations is actually translated when the sound was heard, which brings a different light on the text. Some question what the sound was. What were they hearing? G. Morgan believes that it was the rushing mighty wind. Bishop Treese believes that it was other tongues. If we had time, we could dive into that because Bishop Treese lays out a false doctrine that he is attacking and why he believes it's other tongues. This is not important to what we're talking about tonight. Regardless of what it was, there was a sound that was going on. Whether it was the rushing mighty wind or whether it was tongues, there was something that was going on loud enough to gather 3,000 plus people. That tells me it behooves us to not have dead church. There is a benefit for noise. There is a benefit for there being a sound. In fact, it is impossible to read through Acts chapter 2 and not figure out real quick that when the Holy Ghost finally fell on the day of Pentecost, they went from sitting to dancing in the streets, speaking in other tongues. Somewhere when Pentecost gets a hold of you, it goes out of this church and it goes into the street. And it's loud. It's loud. I know a lot of people say that prayer is praying in your heart and meditating in your mind. And I get that. I'm sure there is a portion of prayer where we sit and, and we are quiet and we wait for God to speak to us. But I know for a fact this prayer was not quiet because there were 3,000 people plus standing in the street saying, What in the world is that Racket. You know, somewhere, somehow, our life for God needs to become so noisy that the neighbors are stepping out saying, what's going on in so-and-so's life? What have they encountered? That they say, we need to go to your church. We need to experience what you're experiencing. So regardless of what sound actually drew this multitude, the point remains the same. That if we are willing to dwell in His presence until His Spirit is poured out, His Spirit will do the drawing for us. The reason we're drawing this out tonight is because our Bible says it was noised abroad. And we begin to think of, well, there, were, there's, there was gossip going out. That Have you seen the craziness that's going on? But what these... These ling ling linguists are drawing out in the original is that there was a sound that was heard. It wasn't simply gossip. It was a group of people that had got in one accord in one place and said, We are not leaving until the power of the Holy Ghost falls. And when that happened, God began to draw. John 6, says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It behooves us to get in the Holy Ghost. There is a place that we can go where we no longer are just handing out a card, where we no longer are just knocking on a door, where we no longer are doing forms of outreach. But as Brother Young Young said, there is an in draw. There is something going out of this building that's no longer outreach. It's an in draw where the Holy Ghost has reached such a climax that God himself creates a ruckus to draw people. Before moving on, let us be clear. We are not advocating for simply throwing all evangelism into the lap of the Father. 
and saying, well, you said you would draw them, so we'll just wait until you draw them. Rather, we are driving home the point of Scripture that evangelism is most effective when it is done in alignment with how the Father is reaching during that season. So if the Father's knocking doors, we should go knock doors. And if the Father is handing out one-a-day in vitamins, we should hand out one-a-day in vitamins. And if the Father moves into a time of home Bible studies, we move into a time of home Bible Bible studies. However, the Father is reaching. We should partner with Him because He does the drawing. Verse 7 and 8. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born? The men and women hearing the praises of God in their own language were astounded because the men and women speaking in their language were Galilean. They were from the remote part of Israel and undoubtedly would have had much less exposure to foreign languages than the other areas of Israel. The crowd was amazed and marveled because this seemed beyond the scope of the Galileans human capabilities. Keener in his study of Acts even points out the historical fact that these simple folk were known for their mispronunciations and their improper speech. They couldn't even speak their own language right. So how in the world are they? That's how I feel like sometimes. I can't even get my own language right. Keener's driving that home with some historical ancient writings. He's saying that they couldn't even get their own language right. This is why the people standing around, which were educated, which could speak multiple languages, were looking at these simple Galileans, these simple fishermen, and saying, we are amazed. We are astounded. How are we hearing them speak in all of these different languages? Because... They had been alone, or excuse me, Keener in his study of Acts even points out that they struggled with mispronunciations and improper speech. And yet, because these 120 had been alone with him, who? Jesus. They had been in a place with Jesus to the point of being filled to overflowing with the Spirit What was humanly impossible suddenly became possible. It was not that they had been so educated over many years that they could speak this language. And if God tells you to do that, then do that. But what was going on is these men and women had gone so deep in prayer that they had stepped out of the natural and into the supernatural. And what was impossible with man suddenly became possible with God. Matthew 19, 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. There may be some things that we look at tonight saying it is impossible for human capability, but with Jesus it is possible. The soul that you feel is beyond the reach of God. It is beyond your reach. But someone is never beyond the reach of Jesus Christ. If you're sick in your body and you feel like the sickness has gone beyond your control and beyond the control of the doctor, it may have. But it has never gone beyond the control of Jesus Christ. Or that brokenness from your past that you can't get through that you can't overcome that brokenness, Jesus can heal tonight. God can put your finances back together. God can put your family back together. God can put your marriage back together. Why? Because with men, we reach impossibility. But with God, all things are possible. If you believe that, why don't you clap your hands? 
Come on, why don't somebody latch on to that word from God? It's not impossible. It's not hopeless. Hope is never beyond your reach if you can just touch Jesus. If you can just get to the master. Like the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the master, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. So these Galileans had tucked into the supernatural because they were willing to wait until they were endued with power from on high. Some of us here tonight need to quit listening to the liar of this world, that old serpent, the devil, that tells you it cannot be done. It cannot be obtained. It cannot be reached. They cannot be saved. They've gone too far. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. They've gone beyond the point. Everybody likes to talk about the unforgivable sin. And, 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 and people that have been in Pentecost for a long time like to sit around and say, well, they, they, they're, they're just heretical. They, they, they are reprobate. They have gone beyond the reach of God. But God is talking to someone tonight and telling you to shut the voice of the devil off in your life because God can do whatever he he wants to do whenever he decides to do it. He can look at you when you stand in a boat and say, Come, walk on me. With, walk, walk with me in the water. He can look at sickness and tell sickness to be gone. He can look at disease and tell it to be healed. He can look at demon possession and tell them to be free. God can do anything. If you believe. Brother Richard, if you would come. I'm almost done. We find in Acts 2 verses 9 through 11. We find a list. That we mentioned before. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in parts of Libya about Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Verses 9 through 11 help to give credence to Luke's statement made in verse 5 about there being people from every Nation, some feel, now this is interesting, this is another side note, it's just something for you to think about that I found in, in reading through some of this, but some feel that some, if not all of the people on the day of Pentecost were probably singing. This is not salvific, okay, it's just interesting. Why? Because verse 11, there's a particular phrase that says, we do hear them speak in tongues. The wonderful works of God. The phrase wonderful works can also be translated in our modern English as great things. This phrase is only used one other place in scripture. It is when Mary burst into song over being chosen to birth the Messiah. Luke 149. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. And holy is his name. Moving on, verse 12, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? All of this commotion brought about the first of three responses. And for the sake of time, we're only going to talk about the first one. It brought about the three first responses to the newly birthed church. According to G. Morgan, verse 12 and 13 list this initial response. Acts of the Apostles, pages 38 and 39. Those three responses are amazement, perplexity, and then criticism. This is the first impression of the church ever made. And thus beho behooves us to study it. Like I said, we're just going to discuss amazement. For one simple point in passing. Amazement 
This was a mental arresting or grasping of the mind. The church should always arrest the attention of those around it. They were all amazed, but had yet to receive illumination. They didn't yet understand, but they wondered. Wonder is the birthing ground of worship. Out of wonder, worship is born. Wonder is not worship by itself, but rather is the first step towards worship. And thus, where wonder ceases, worship ceases. When one loses their wonder of God and of His ways, their worship will cease. And thus, we ask ourselves the question, have we lost our wonder of God? Have we somehow lost our wonder of His Word? Somehow have the cares of life stepped in and now the bills make us wonder more than the ways of Almighty God. In verse 13, others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Others mocking said, this is a, a, another translation in, in modern vernacular. Others mocking said, these have been filled with sweet new wine. While we know that these men were not drunk on alcohol, Paul seems to hint, as Peter did, that they were intoxicated on something, but from a whole new level and of a whole new proportion. Ephesians 5, 18, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. If we could all stand. And so we close with this question from the Holy Ghost tonight. What are you intoxicated with? In your journey through life. Are you filled with worry or stress? Are you intoxicated with anxiety and depression? Are you filled with the filth of this world? Sports and drugs and pornography. Or maybe it's an immoral or sexual relationship outside of the bounds of scripture. Or maybe you're intoxicated with sickness and disease. Would you not like to exchange all of that for the intoxication of Pentecost? An eternal springing up of living water. The Lord, the hope of glory, living inside of you. Would you not like to be filled with this sweet new wine? Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not the death of this world. We know that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. A river of living water that allows you to step out of the intoxication of drugs. And out of the intoxication of immoral relationships. To step out of the intoxication of addiction, of bondage, of immorality and it allows you to step into a river that flows with life. Are you tired of the junk of this world that brings no satisfaction? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you feel that God has found you in this service tonight, the only thing that I can give you is Jesus and Him crucified. If you want past the drugs, if you want past the hurt, if you want past the addiction, 
I and my own volition cannot fix you. But in this church, there is a God whose name is Jesus who wants to fill you up with his spirit. Why don't we pray? Come on, why don't you let Jesus touch you? You're the whole reason he died. You're the reason he was buried. You're the reason he rose again. You're the reason he gave us the hope of glory. You're the reason for the day of Pentecost. Why? Because God wants to fill you with this sweet new wine. God wants to fill you with his spirit. God wants to live inside of you. Oh, that's it. Just talk to him. That's it, woman of God. That's it, man of God. Just reach out. Just reach out. If you're dry, if you feel like you're walking through a dry place, the book of Isaiah said he'll be a river in the desert. He'll be a river in the dry place. He'll be a river of life flowing from out of you. Right now, if you're sick in your body, the healer's in the room. God can heal you. God can heal your mind. Jesus can touch you tonight. If you'll reach out, reach out and touch him. If you'll reach out and grasp the master as he's passing by, God will touch you. God will heal you. God will deliver. Come on, it's not the will of God for you to be sick. It's not the will of God for you to be depressed. It is not the will of Jesus Christ for you to suffer from anxiety and depression and fear and oppression. It is not the will of God for you to look at bills and wonder, how am I going to pay this? God sent for you to be the head and not the tail. God sent for you to be above and not beneath. Why don't you let him fill you up tonight? He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room tonight. Depression in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to go. Addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to leave. Sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got to go. Come on, be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be loose from your bondage. Be loose from your burden. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your spirit be loose, God. Let every burden be loose, Jesus. Let every yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
touch him tonight while he's in the room, while your Messiah is here. Reach out, ask of me, ask of me, ask him tonight, ask him tonight. Jesus, we need you. Revive this city, God. Breathe life into this city, Jesus. Break the strongholds of addiction. Break the strongholds of immorality, God. Break the strongholds until you. In the name. 
here. He's in the room. He's walking right beside you. He's standing with you in the storm. He's standing with you. Just reach out and ask. Reach out and ask. What do you need? Come on, what's that thing that's so big you're afraid to ask him? Ask him. He said, ask what you will. Ask what you will. In his name, ask it tonight. Come on, that thing that the enemy's been telling you it can't happen. It won't happen. It's too big. It's too far beyond human reasoning. It's too far beyond human power. With God, it's possible. Ask him tonight with faith believing. And God's going to meet you at the point of your need. this in the Holy Ghost right now there's a lot of sickness in this church a lot of people out tonight that are sick let's bind together right now let's pray against that sickness God's going to heal right now because there's a lot of faith in here can you lift your hands let's all stand let's lift your hands let's pray against that in the name of Jesus I pray against this affliction I pray against these viruses I pray that you would protect your people this year oh God I pray against the fear and how many of these afflictions ride into our bodies and our minds on these fears that are put in our hearts by enemies of our faith. Oh God, I believe you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's thank him for his healing power. Let's thank him for his healing power. Let's thank him for his healing power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a lot of Holy Ghost in this house. There's a lot of Holy Ghost in this house. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I need some people that will fast tomorrow. Thank you. I need some people that will fast Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Do I have anybody around here? Thank you. I need some people that will fast Wednesday. 
Thank you. I need some people that will fast Thursday. Thank you. I need some people that will fast Friday. I've got one. Thank you. I need some people that will fast Saturday. Thank you. One more. Give me one more Saturday. Did anybody over here raise their hand? Thank you. Thank you. This kind go out, goeth not out. I want to tell you many times the human will and the lusts of the flesh and the lusts of the eye, the pride of life are stronger than demons. Demons can't stop the church. But if we can bring ourselves into submission to the Holy Ghost, nothing can stop God from doing what He wants to do. That's right. He said, Brother Elder, I don't know if I agree. Go look in the Bible. When Jesus prayed in the garden, He didn't say one thing about the devil. He said, not my will, but thy will. The devil is conquered. Jesus said, Satan hath no part in me. If we can bring our flesh into submission to the Holy Ghost. How many of you want that with all of your heart? How many of you willing to fight the fight that it takes to bring ourselves into the submission of God? Let's thank God for this word. That was a word from God. Let's thank God for the word of the Lord that has come to us tonight. Come on, let's give him the praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your anointing, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is the goal and it is the vision of this church, and the leadership of this church, that our family prayer is on Monday night at 6.30 is our biggest attended service. We invite you, bring your children. You say, Brother Elder, it's a, it's a fight. Well, it's a fight the minute you have that kid. It does. It does. So I'll be glad when they get older. Sometimes that helps and sometimes it don't. Praise God. But the only way they're going to learn is for you to bring them. And somewhere while they're running around in the power of the Holy Ghost just permeating in this place, God begins to do incredible things in their life. So we invite you to come to family prayer tomorrow night at 6.30. And I believe there's discipleship tomorrow night. It's exciting. God bless you. Love one another. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.